Yesterday, the security agencies of this country raped our democracy. It was a big shock. I, I just recovered from it this morning, the disappointment. See, the DSS, the police and the military raped our democracy. It was like a coup by the security agencies of this country. It was an INEC. My party members were shouting INEC. INEC, they, met, they were scared. They changed, they brought people from different states of this country. And when they came, they were willing to walk. But when you see the security agents that are supposed to protect you in a state where they behave people like chicken, doing the bidding of government, what do you do? You play ball or they kill you. A state where they bomb the, their own citizens, a state where they have the tiger base, where innocent people are falling like flies. Go to the mortuary of that state, thousands of dead bodies unclaimed, and you want somebody from Ghana or someone from Southwest who has never been here before, and he's seeing security agents doing the bidding of the APC government, and they want their security agent not to sign whatever they ask them to sign. It's not INEC. Because there was not everything we asked for except the removal of the wreck. INEC listened to us, did it. But we are now watching the, this is the time the chairman will now come and tell us why he didn't stop the collation yesterday. Because you cannot have collation where what you have on, on, your, on the, the document, uh, the resource sheet, is different from what you have on your IRF. And he told us, he told the whole country that this time beavers will work. And that beavers will be used for accreditation. 70% of the voting yesterday was done without beavers accreditation. Yet, a result was announced. You know, so, well, um, I am uh, told my people that this is just the beginning. After all, it was Supreme Court that made a uh, uh, hope was the governor of Himo State. Since it, it is the culture now in Nigeria that if you want to be a governor, it's the court that will make you governor. If you want to be a president, it's the court that will make you So, let's see. Let, my, I'm, I'm calling on all the Labour Party, members of the Labour Party, do not be the solution. You, were, you are great people. You fought. And a small party, an unknown party like the Labour Party, can come out and be what it is today in Nigeria and Imo State, Abia State, Enugu, everywhere. I mean, it's kudos to you people. And then the way you could see how can a next person who saw how they manhandled the, the, the Labour uh, uh, president of the Nigerian Labour Congress, how I was surrounded, attacked, shot at. I mean, disobey any APC uh, uh, sole administrator or commissioner. These things were taken to commissioner's houses, writing results there. Taken to a traditional ruler's house, writing results there. There was a cluster voting in Osu. They came out, lined up uh, uh, the, um, uh, polling boots and in one location took buses, brought foreigners to come and claim that they voted. Why did they not accredit them if they are from also? And these things happened. You expect any INEC man not to obey them. I mean, this is crazy. You know, so the gentlemen of the press, I expect you to come and tell the whole world what you saw yesterday. Because most of you were even giving us reports of what you saw. Had they beat up the arise uh, person at the house of a traditional ruler where they have been, so where they were thumb printing inside the compound through the arise correspondent and so many others. So Nigerians, we need to, this is a fight, and I'm calling on all I pay all INEC staff, all ad hoc staff who have something to say about what happened yesterday who have any evidence to come out openly. Some have been calling me already since last night. One was in tears. 
and sent me. He said he couldn't talk because they would kill him. He, but he, last night, I told him to stand up like a man and say what he saw. And he did. He wrote it and forwarded it to me. So many other things, so many other incidents. So I'm calling all Nigerians, all of us of freedom, to come and join the Labour Party. Let us take that man out of Douglas House. He doesn't deserve to stay there one night longer. It's a rape on democracy. I thank you all. I want to ask you for your reaction about the meeting of the we are going to court on that. The chairman of the Labour Party was brutalized. I spoke to the D, uh, DIG, Frank, by this morning. He, he just told me now that he's been released. And I asked him why the men who brutalized him are still walking free. And the gentleman who was only... I mean, he, he was protecting his rights last night as a lawyer, as a Democrat, and as chairman of the Labour Party. Asking the man, the professor, these professors are, it's a shame. These are men, professor, a professor. Sylvia Ago, a professor. That man, a professor. These are men we are supposed to respect. Eh? Men who stand, on, 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 who are supposed to stand shoulders high. Sitting on the citadel of knowledge. Coming out yesterday, still to be talking from his right and left side of his mouth. But I, I, you could see that Sylvia Ago was pained. I, I really sympathize with her. On the yesterday, I, I, I want to believe that. But she should have stood up for democracy. She should have. So you can imagine that's how, how much she's been compromised. But you could see it on her face. She was pained. I was telling my wife, I said, that woman is in, is in trouble. And she was in real pain. She was in pain. She wanted to speak up, but fear also. But I'm calling on Sylvia Agu to speak up. Stand up. Speak up for democracy. You're an Igbo woman, for God's sake. This is a rape on Igbo land and Nigeria. You know. So the chairman was brutalized. We're going to take action on that. Thank you. President, just tell us in clear terms, are you rejecting the vote on what grass? My friend, there was no vote in so many uh, local governments in, in the state. And the places where we voted, they carried, they refused to upload the results, claiming, you see, claiming that uh, it wasn't uploading. In some places, when the youth got restive and, and wanted to attack them, the state started uploading automatically. So, and then finally, they didn't want to collate at the World Collation Centers. It was planned. And these were the assurances they gave us before this election. So there was no election, as a matter of fact. Then they carried all collation to local government, uh, uh, some to local government headquarters, very few to INEC uh, local government offices. And when they got there, they barred all the other uh, uh, AG, a party agents allowed only party agents, APC soul administrators, APC officials, commissioners gained entry. Meanwhile, all other parties were shut out by the security agencies that are supposed to protect the process. So you can imagine what went on there. So actually, there was no election yesterday. So it's like a call for a cancellation. Cancellation, yes, total cancellation of the election. Yes, sir. In, in more clear terms, sir, as you call for cancellation, and um, you make a case for a student mandate, how do you intend to reclaim the mandate? In very clear terms. No, this is a, it's, it's a straightforward. We are approaching the courts immediately. Mm. We are approaching the courts immediately to reclaim our mandate. We won clearly, won clearly. We have the results, we won on ground, won clearly before the, all these shenanigans started. You said you are pushing the courts, but in a few months down the line, Nigerians are seen to lose faith in the judicial system. What's your take on that since you were heading to that same system? Well, I have not lost hope in the judiciary yet because um, there are so many men of of integrity in the judiciary, you know, so I have hopes that the right thing will be done. 
Believing that uh, many motorists came out to vote for the party, what is your message to them now that many of them are actually feeling... Uh... Yeah, that's my... The young, the young people who came out in droves in spite of the disenchantment to the process, I promised them. I promised them I'll protect the process because I was promised by the security agencies in this country. The IG, two of army staff, TG, DSS, I went to all of them. I appealed to them that we want free, a free and fair process. I appealed to all of them. There was only the... Can you imagine? The only person I didn't meet was the DG of uh, civil defense. And it was only civil defense that stood up for Nigerians yesterday. Only civil defense that stood up for Nigerians yesterday. So I met all of them. So when they, they gave me firm promises that this process was going to be free and fair, when I started getting worried was after the bombing in uh, Okigwe and the burning of the houses by the military in the human Bar. And I told the Jews that, look, you have to calm these people down. Because they are now scared. Because how can uh, 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 our military were paid by uh, paid from our taxes, from the, uh, the revenue, uh, from our you know commonwealth wealth to to their paid? You know, it's, it's unbelievable. How can they be attacking us, people who are paid, trained to protect us? So when they now saw the military convoys, the military presence, the presence uh, you know, on, on, of security agencies like they have never seen before. They all got scared. That's why you had apathy yesterday. Because I had, we had sensitized them during campaign. And they were all raring to go. They were all bold, fearless. Say, okay, that's what I was telling them. And they were all ready. Then the military came. Everywhere police presence. So they got scared and they were patrolling. They were not even talking to the citizens. I called them and I said, talk to them. Tell them you are here to protect them. They never did. That's when I got worried. So the youths, I don't call you out to come and fight, you know, protect your votes and all that. That's why I kept quiet throughout yesterday. I didn't want anybody to lose their lives. Because they already planned this with the security agencies. So who is going to protect you? I won't be there to protect you. You know, so when I realized that, I'm so sorry. I hear that a lot of you are angry with me that I, I, I didn't allow you people to come out and fight. I, I couldn't have, you know. So I'm sorry about that. I take full responsibility for what happened yesterday. But I assured Imolites that I'll protect their votes. I'm very, very sorry about that. There were um, a lot of um, videos online, uh, vote by, massive vote by, and um, also, there was a video where a police officer was also almost beating to stupor because he went to snatch one of us. It has actually become a culture in Nigeria. Now, goodbye. It's a shame. But you see, the, what politicians do, most of this, that's why I've been telling people, okay, an INEC officer who collects, or a police officer, or a military man for that matter, or a DSS person, who collects one million naira, and elects a criminal into power. Within one month, that one million naira has disappeared. And then for the next four years, you'll be living in penury. Every day, your can you imagine since um go on till now? Every year, not I'm not go on, no, go on. There are those times were better. But since democracy came actually, every year you are purchasing power dwindles. Every year. Because what these people do, they cut this money, our our commonwealth. They will go and hide it in foreign banks. That's what they do. So the purchasing power, your purchasing power goes down because the money in the bank drops. The liquidity in the money market goes down. Then the interest rates here go up. The interest rates abroad go down because their banking system is awash with funds. So of what benefit is it to you? To continue doing the same thing, getting the same result every time, you are doing the same thing. 
Every worker in Nigeria is supposed to own a house. You're entitled to mortgage. You don't have it. I went to a house of a policeman in Nasarawa one time. One of the policemen was working for me. His house, he was living, his family, they were living in a one bedroom apartment. His house was, well, that one room, they used the sheet to share it. Kitchen on one side, mattress on the floor on one side, where his wife and two little kids were staying. I couldn't believe it. I confronted Okiro then, he was the IG of police. In fact, it was that confrontation that led to the uh, creation of the, uh, I think, the building department or what in the Nigerian police. They split the works department, created the Okiro, you know, a man with a, with a conscience, you know. He did that. So I'm calling on INEC staff, Nigerian police, military, those who have something to say about what happened yesterday, come out and say it. Don't be afraid. Come out and say it. I know this country is a very bad place. And maybe if it was your superiors that have uh, been compromised and you're afraid that you lose your job, come out, see what happened yesterday. The civil defense people were calling out everybody. Fearless. Those men have honor and integrity. Come out, say what happened. Even if you have collected money, you stolen money, nothing will happen to you. Let the person come and say where he got the money he gave you. Come out, say the truth. Let's save this country. This is our country. Every year it's getting worse. It's getting worse. Let's do something about it, please. Let's save the drift into anarchy. Other opposition political parties have also rejected the outcome of the election. Is there any possibility of a coalition? Uh, you know, within the opposition parties to actually fight this particular injustice? Of course, that has signaled a coalition now because the Nigerian people are, are not happy. Not just Imo, Imo, Imo lights. The whole Nigerian. Nobody's happy. As a matter of fact, before this election, everywhere I went to, they would ask us, ah, why can't you people come together? Why can't you come together? And do, no, there is nobody who doesn't want this man out of Douglas House. No sane person. What he's been doing to Imolites. Not the same person. So that's why I'm watching, I'm calling out the INEC chairman not to, not to, I mean, to stop this process, to cancel this election. There was no election yesterday. I'm calling Professor Mahmoud. Cancel this election. There was no election yesterday. <laughs>